This is the story of a man named Stanley. That's me. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. And I love my job. This is what job. employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. What the hell? What was that voice? Is that coming out of my computer? My computer's not doing anything. Uh, hello? All of his co-workers were gone. What? what could it mean? Uh, Stanley decided to go gone. to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. What the... Where the hell is that voice coming from? Hello? No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Yeah, well obviously I can't find a trace of my co-workers because they're not here. Where the hell are you? Hello? Uh, nobody in here either. Well, at least that voice stopped. I don't know where the hell that was coming from. Hello? Is anybody here? When Stanley what? came to a set of two open what? doors, he entered the door on his left. What? Why? Why Why did I enter the door on the left? What the hell is going on here? Uh... Weird voice coming out of thin air. I don't trust it. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Well, yeah, Perhaps I'm not... he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, well, no, just I don't... to admire it. Okay. The employee lounge. Ah, <sighs> yes. Oh, truly a wow, room this worth is... admiring. It had yes. really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Oh, drinks. No. No drinks. Shit. Yes. Really, really worth it being here well, in the room. Yeah. A room so utterly captivating what? that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished... I know. you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings? Well, they're really actually... Worth it. Yes, they're actually nice chairs. And the paintings are... Eh, they're okay. At this point, yes. Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy. Oh, shut and up. reflected poorly, but at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. First open... N no, still don't trust weird, creepy voice from nowhere. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Well, I, no, I just... I'm blatantly ignoring you. Do not jump from the cargo lift while it's in motion. It will cause death. Okay. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. 
I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. I haven't Please, forgotten about stop anybody. Stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. Her? Who her? What? This is it, Stanley. Uh, would you your shut up and let me yourself. talk for a minute? To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. Her? She's Who's been her? waiting. Who's her? There's a girl in here waiting for me? That's her, Stan. Uh... You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in uh... another, then pick up the phone. Uh, This room is kind of creeping me out. Hello? Hello? What the hell? Oh, Stanley, is that you? Yeah, Hold it's on, me. Hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. Um, All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. Oh, what? <laughs> gotcha. Oh, you son oh, of a come bitch. come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Well, Who'd want yeah. to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Uh, I'm not sure I want to know at this point. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. I'm not dead. Good morning, and push Z on your keyboard. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Oh, hey, come on. No, I'm not pressing G. No, I'm not doing it. I'm not playing your fucking game, narrator. I'm not... I'm... Fuck, fine. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Well, now what the fuck else buttons. am I supposed now, to do? You lock me in a room. Lunch. Now, he's going home. No, he's coming back to work. Yeah, that's One how life works, dickhead. Him, except that he's chosen this life. Well, no, this life was kind of chosen for me. Well, no, I accepted the job, but... And then, I, well, they, they tell me to push the buttons, but... I'm not at my fucking desk right now, asshole. I don't... Fine. Press V. But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic well, I definitely found the unknown. Lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Well, no, that's why I have the job, because I want it to eventually happen to me. Watch TV? Why would I... Uh, and so he began well, well, to fantasize hey, where the about his own job. Where the fuck First, did the TV he imagined go? That one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. I, uh, I knew all this. Stop telling me to push fucking buttons. The boys? Where are the boys? There's no boys here. <sighs> Push Z. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. Well, yeah, but... No, see? Because you're still taking the fucking choice away. You're making me push these buttons. Prepare dinner? For who? My fucking mannequin wife? <sighs> As he wandered through oh, this the, fantasy world, the kitchen go? he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. 
Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. Tell my kids a story? What fucking kids? Just let me go back to my desk and push my buttons. I don't... I don't want to push the buttons here. Uh, fine. It was such a wonderful fantasy, and so in his head, he relived it again, and then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. What the fuck are Surely you talking about? Surely there's an about? answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. God, this narrator is getting on my frickin' nerves. Let me out of this damn room. <sighs> Press R to tell your wife you love her. Hi, honey. I love you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. But there is no oh, answer. What the? How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing I'm back in my changed. freaking cubicle. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. What do you mean, which life is the real one? This life is definitely not real. The hell? Push G. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. No. Here, watch this. Because I'm not Stand an me. observer. The next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Don't do it. But you're telling me not to do it, which means you want me to do it to show that I am my own person. So I I have to push the button. Push it. You see? Can he just not hear me? No, How can because you're in a way that he'll understand that you're every second part he of this system. Here, he's electing to kill himself. How can no. I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I don't know. But no, now you want me to push more buttons. No, I question it all. I don't want to question nothing. But... Let me... Ah, oh, fuck. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose. The same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried... What the... What do you... The... What in the fuck was that? There's still no All of his here. co-workers were gone. Yes. What could it mean? They're... Stanley decided to go to the meeting. No, room. we did this Perhaps already. He simply missed a memo. Uh, okay. Okay, maybe this time stay on the path. The narrator says go left. Go left. When Stanley came to a but, set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. Door on the left. No. -uh. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Do not alter alter without consulting whiteboard manager. Meeting room. Meetings. Today. Today is Thursday. Meeting schedule. Nothing. Not cost efficient. Standard graphs 40x wide. Number of slides on this slide. Slide. 
number of slides on this slide is one. There's one slide on that slide because that's the slide. Rate at which charts on the same slide depict the same information. Oh, oh wait, slow down. No, rate the increase in graphs per. Whoa, stop. Yes, stop. The boss appreciation minute. Top 20 things you love about your boss. I don't love a fucking thing about my boss. Goddamn assholes got the whole office playing some kind of sick fucking joke. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. The boss's office, yes. Let's go to the boss's office. Where's the boss's office? What the hell? Wow. Raging Inigo Maniac works in this fucking office. Sir! Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the keypad? boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Ah. Two, eight, four, five. Two, eight, four, but of five. course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Two, eight, four, five. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by uh, sheer luck. Amazing. Yes, it he was amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. You do know I can hear you. That's how I knew the code. Because I can hear you. Uh, fuck that. Fuck that scary place. Uh, oh, c come on. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, at least the lights came on. Whew. That's good. Oh. <clears throat> now the lights went out. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Why do I feel what? What do you do? What the? The fuck was that? Okay. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control, control facility. facility. The Mind Control Facility. Uh, hello? I don't have an appointment, but I don't want my mind controlled. I think there's already a little bit of that going on, isn't there? Shit. Oh. Uh, hello? Is there anybody out here? The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. Oh. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Yes. I have the strength. What the hell is this place? You could watch every sporting event in history at the same time. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. Is that and mine? Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant 427. nothing. 427. 427, right there. 427. Show me again. 427. There's not anybody anywhere. What is that? Oh, that one looked a little screwy. 
There is nobody. Absolutely fucking nobody. This mind Fire. control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, it's it's fun. They pay me to push a button. It's almost better than getting no. paid to sleep. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? What? No, I... I can see the world. I know but what's going the on. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. I get to fuck some shit up? Can I push the big red button? That'll blow it up, right? No? The hell? There's freaking nothing here. All these panels, I can't push a button on any of them. Nothing. See, nothing. Oh, what's this one? No. See, that one doesn't do a damn thing either. What's in there? Mind controls idle awaiting input. Ah, here. Okay. And when at last System he found power. the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. That's right. Fuck off, bitch. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized I none don't of this care. mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. That's not a door, that's like a big freaking movie screen. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. What the hell are you and talking Stanley about? Was happy. And what am I supposed to do out here? Get a job pushing a button?
What? What the hell? Why, you son of a bitch! Oh, come on! How am I... What? All of his co-workers were gone. Oh, shut up! What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yeah, the meeting room. I got it. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Uh, no. Door on the right. Because this was not you. the correct way yes, to the I meeting room. Yes, I know it's room, not the right Stanley way. And Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. No, I don't want to admire the employee wow. lounge. Wow, yes. employee lounge. This wow, room. great place. Ooh. What a but eager to get back to business, Stanley yes. took the first open door on his left. First open door on the left. Did I do... What did I do last time? Yeah. Okay, I think I went that way last time. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Back on track. Got it. Through Yet here. there was not a single person here either. Nobody's here. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss. Coming no, to a I'm staircase, not going up. Stanley walked upstairs go. to his boss's office. No, he didn't. He walked downstairs, because fuck you. He's getting the hell out of here just for real. Couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. What do you mean? He there was no work. For that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? Because, there, because there was no work. Everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. And what are those? For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? Those and are great questions. Matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? Yes. No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming! Yes! He yelled. This is all a dream! Of course, oh, that's it. What a relief it is a dream. felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. Yes. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. No, I'm not. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. No, it's I not a boring well job. I enjoy this while I'm still lucid. Oh, would you shut so, up? He imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. What? Oh. Then he imagined himself soaring through no. space on a magical star field. I didn't. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? I don't... And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. You talk One a lot. he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? I've been asking now that question, but you don't fucking listen to me. By Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts. Yeah, thought. how the... How can you even know what my thoughts are? They're my thoughts. If this voice spoke to all people in their dreams. The truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Well, it was has Stanley to be simply something. Deceiving himself? Believing that if trip? he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice so speak these words... So, where have you been my whole Stanley. life? After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself You're too. You're having surely, an argument surely, with yourself. If he could just... Would you stop? He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. What? So he closed his eyes gently. Okay. And he invited himself to wake up. He wake felt up. the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The wake fresh up. air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. Wake up. I'm through with this dream. 
I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. I'm okay. Well, no, I'm not okay. I'm in the same fucking place. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Now, who the fuck was that voice in my head? This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself. Yeah, that was probably me. Sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Thanks. Oh, no! What the shit? I died! I was on the road dead! I... Uh, oh, let me guess. The co-workers gone. are gone, right? What could oh, it, mean? it means they're gone. Stan had decided oh, to go yeah, to the meeting room. yeah, go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No, there's no memo I missed. Well, maybe, maybe there is a memo I missed. Wait. Let me go to the conference room. When Stanley came to a set of two <clears throat> open doors, yes, he, went he the entered one on the, the door left. on his left. A memo. Maybe I did miss a memo. Uh, memo. Yet there was not a single memo. person here oh, either. Shut up, narrator. A wave of disbelief. I'm looking for Stanley the memo. Stanley decided to go up to his memo. boss's office, memo. hoping he might find an answer there. Memo. Uh, we have our new product. Graphics about days. Oh, what do people want? No facts. Telephone numbers. Profit, profit, profit. Throw something in the bin, in the idea bin. No more bins, trash cans, renaming the idea. Firing of me, ideas. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay. There's no memo I missed. Right. Coming to a staircase, he walked Stanley upstairs walked upstairs to, the boss's to his office. boss's office. Now, can I go somewhere else and not in his office? Oh, executive bathroom. Ooh, nice. I've got the feeling money's for stealing, but not yours, of course. Say, that's a lovely purse. Oh, that he rhymes. How sweet. Did he leave a memo in here? No. Shit. Uh, maybe this door. Let me through. Aha. This'll... God! What the hell? The hell kind of shitty business strategy is that? Asshole. An elevator. Ah, this'll get me out of here. Yes, I want to go down, first floor, out front door. Stand. 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 
No, that's wrong. That's wrong. Uh, where the fuck? What floor was I on? This is the longest elevator ride ever. Ah. Oh, what the? Oh, what the hell? No. I push down and down again and end up back here? Okay, what the hell is with this fucking elevator? What the shit? Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me! Shoot that fucking panda! Fuck! You son Stepping of a bitch, into his where manager's are you? Office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Yes, we know there's what no human mean? life here. Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. Oh, God. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. 2845, yes. I did know. By simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input Nothing the Nothing random about it. By sheer luck. Amazing. Wasn't luck. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Okay, fine. Here I am again. How do I get out of here? No, I don't want... Oh, you suck. Okay, can I push up this time? No, not down! I pushed up! God, I imagine this is what hell is like. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. No, escape. Yes, I'm going to escape. Screw Although you. this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth Why? was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Oh, bullshit. I don't believe you. The door behind him was not shut. All Stanley this time. still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Uh, no, I don't have to turn around. I got to get the hell out of Stanley here. Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk yes, forward. Yes, I am and making a concerted effort death. to walk forward. No, it's not going to result in my death. What is this? What is this? Uh. Uh. Yeah. That might kill me. Um, can I get out of here? But of course, Stanley thought better of it and realized he simply had too much to live for. Do I, though? No, I don't have enough to live for. Screw you. Nope. Still on board with death. Yes. Better than that.
I don't think you're gonna kill me. I don't think you're gonna let me die. Ha <laughs> ha! I was right. I was right, I was right. Oh. What the hell? Oh, shit. As the machine whirred into motion, and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected no, no, that his I'm life not. had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. No, Farewell, I do not Stanley. accept this end to my bleak and shallow life. No, fuck you. Oh. Farewell, Stanley, oh. cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. No. That's not what happened. Look, it froze. Everything stopped. Ha <laughs> ha, he didn't die. Stanley Parable. What? Okay. But I didn't die. Ha <laughs> ha, fuck you, narrator. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. That's right. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? I have no idea what that prick thought he was going to do. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Yes. Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? No! No, I was not dead. Wait a minute. That's my office. And that's the... What's... That's the... The two doors. I remember the... What the fuck is this? Filing cabinets. This is like a museum of my life. This is like some kind of sick museum of my life. The hell? Button sounds. Each sound is a mix of keyboard strokes. The office. No. None of the doors open. Computers. Installing Chart Pro 2. Deck of cards. Playing solitaire. Employee database. Employee data. Ah. Please enter your command. Print list employees in office. Employee 427. Oh, shit. So I am the only one here? What in the hell? Where the hell did everybody go? Credits? What the fuck? These are the people who created my life? Stuck me in that fucking office and they get their name on the wall in big and beautiful font? Ugh. Maintenance room. The office. What the hell? I am so confused. Is this some kind of sick social experiment? Well, the thing I want to know is, what would you do if Stanley entered any other rooms? Huh? For instance, on a scale of... 
Congratulations. Congratulations in the line of the previously announced regarding ongoing promotion here as a result of the attached file. What? What the fuck is this? A slideshow of emails? Holy shit. Office banter emails. This has got to be the stupidest mu museum ever. The hell? How do I get out of here? Ah, exit. Ah, there we go. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. What? Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No. No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. What are you talking about? Me and the narrator? Me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. How? Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. Press escape as long and as you quit. Move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for choose you. Choose it. Don't what? Oh, for the love of God! I'm back! Okay, so, go to the... When Stanley what? came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No, he didn't. He entered the this door on the right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Yes, he knows. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Yes, admire it. The lounge Ooh. was sublime. Ah, a work sublime. of art. What was it about this room but eager to get back to business? Stanley took the first open door on his left. No, he didn't. He walked straight through. Stanley was so bad it's at following the directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. There's got to be a way out of this loop. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the road. Is wrong there a way out of this here. loop? I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. Damn it! I am very powerful. Wait, Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is, is that they? possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. No. No, the orders were still missing. For now. What? 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 So there's no orders. And there's no people. At least now you're saying something different. Can I go in this one? No. Is there a... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors... Yes, he entered, he entered the door the on the door left. On left. I, I, he knows. You can stop telling him. Take the door on the left. Take the door on the left. Ah, he came to the yes, business Yes, there was room. not a single was person no here, here either. Blah. Feeling a wave of disbelief. Stanley decided to go up to his boss. Coming to a staircase, Stanley okay, walked no, upstairs up. to his boss's office. No, I know what's up. Nothing up. The office with the scary door and the other thing. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. No, he his might boss be isn't there. That. And in such a competitive economy, don't you remember economy, the boss wasn't why there? Had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. I was His just, boss would think he was crazy. I was and just here. And then something here. occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. I'm stuck example, in a freaking loop. Why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? No, I don't why care where my feet are. behind him wherever he went. 
Exactly. And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. They were are. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm stuck I'm in a dreaming. freaking dreaming. No, it's not a dream. Yelled, this is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. Yes, he, he is. Himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself I, flying uh, and began again? to gently float above the ground. And the car. Then he imagined Eleven. himself soaring Twelve. through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled it was that he still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head Ask dictating sooner. everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And one make thought it, it all stop. very odd, and one if this voice spoke to all stop. people in their dreams. The truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply How could deceiving this not himself, be a dream? believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? The fucking Stanley car! Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain beyond no, a doubt that No, the shock is hearing you say it again! Dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently. It's not a dream. And it's he invited a freaking himself nightmare. to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. Wake I'm up! With this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be Everything fine. Everything is fine. I am okay. Stanley began Shit. screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Again. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Who the fuck is Mariella? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself. It's never and then collapsed dead end. on the sidewalk. And although she would soon no turn to go I call do. for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there staring down at the body and then she turned and ran. 
I hope she picked up her briefcase. No, no, no! Come on! No matter what I do, I die, it sends me back here. I go down a hallway, it sends me back here. I take an elevator, it sends me back here. I apparently jump out a freaking window and die, and it sends me back here. Uh, I'm done. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. I'm done. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? I'm not he doing it. He had never it. been trained I'm not. for that. No. This is the this end. This couldn't go anywhere except badly. Exactly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. That's Nothing it. We're just going to wait. Nothing will break me. I'm just going to wait here. here I can be happy forever. And just I wait will be for happy. my orders. Stanley waited. Hours passed. Then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure it's been beyond less than any a minute. doubt was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, they someday, will. they would arrive. They will. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. Someone he will be will told come. what to do. An order's gonna now come on the computer. Just a little bit closer. But it's now not. it's even closer. Here it comes. Oh, you son of a bitch! <laughs> I don't wanna. I don't wanna do it anymore. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. <laughs> <laughs>